Um, we're just gonna jump right into our next panel. Who's familiar with Boston Dynamics? Yeah, cool robots. Let's get it on. Please welcome to the stage, Mark Rabert from Boston Dynamics and Brian Heater. So like, she's doing it all through the day, yeah, yeah. Thank you for joining us, Mark. Oh, it's great being here. This is, I, I, know, I know for a fact that you don't do a lot of these consumer shows. Uh, I, I don't, I think I've only done one before. Okay. <laughs> and I, I believe I was there at the time. You were. It, it must be an entirely different experience for you actually going out there and, and I assume that the questions you're asked are completely different as well. Yeah, usually I go to engineering uh, meetings where it's about, you know, how do you make the robot work and, uh, and things like that. What is, when, when you're out there, when, when people are seeing the robot for, for the first time, what is the one question you wish people would stop asking you? Uh, I, one of the big questions is why are the legs uh, backwards? Of course, they ask why they're backwards no matter what direction they are, uh, but that's the most popular question, I think. So we're actually going to jump right into a video. We've, we, we've got a couple to show you today. I mean, this is, it's, you know, why just talk about it when we actually show everybody what you've been working on for a while? So uh, let's, roll, uh, let's roll, roll a quick video. It'll take you through the, uh, the history of the company. There we go. So this is Big Dog. This is um, about 10 years ago when we started uh, exploring whether or not you could make a dynamic robot that works out in the world. And, uh, you know, our top level goal is to see if we could build machines that do what people and animals do. And uh, this was a start in that. Uh, what, what are we looking at now? This we call Alpha Dog. Uh, it's also called the Legged Squad Support System. And it's a robot that can carry about 400 pounds of load and go about 20 miles uh, through very rugged terrain. This, this, is a, this is a very quick robot we're looking at right here. Yeah, this is the fastest legged robot. That's the Cheetah. And this is Spot. This is a newer robot that we built just over the last yeah. two years. This robot, as far as I can tell, has the best rough terrain mobility of anything that's ever been built. Well, the, uh, the stairs, uh, you know, I, I don't think people realize how difficult it is to they're walk really a set tough. of stairs. This is in Boston, and every stairway is different. None of them are to code. Here we're testing out the idea of whether or not you could do home deliveries, uh, <laughs> not with drones, but with just plain old-legged robots. So, so there's a certain amount of control. Uh, you know, you'll see in some of these shots, there's somebody standing there. I, I suspect it's Seth in some of these cases, uh, holding a laptop. But, but how autonomous are the robots? This is really showing autonomy in that there's no one controlling it other than telling it to go ahead. And in this case, one of our engineers is giving it a hard time and you can see the ability of the robot to stay on target, keep trying to do what we told it to do, which is to get through the door, replanning as it needs to, keeping its balance uh, and the like. All right, this, is, this obviously presents an entirely different challenge. Yeah, but it's, but it's conceptually the same thing. We're showing that the robot has autonomy. Here, Atlas, which is a humanoid robot, uh, is trying to pick up the box. It's using a visual system uh, to locate the box. It's planning its path to approach it so it can use its, its legs and its arms and its torso uh, to get at it, and our engineer is giving it a hard time. Do, do you ever feel a little bit bad? I mean, it seems like a, a large number of these videos involve you abusing the crap out of the robots. Uh, you know, I know the media says we're abusing them. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're really like proud parents showing off what the robots can do. Here we took the robot on vacation up in Vermont, and we're testing it. Uh, it headed right for the bar. Uh, no, but here we're showing it yeah. autonomously traversing uh, a cluttered area. No one's driving it there. It looks like it did get to the bar. Uh, <laughs> it's trying to go up to its room. Uh, and then we played around with uh, some tasks where the robot and the human work together. Uh, it's nice. So after all of the hitting it with hockey sticks, this is, this is the coming together right. of the robot and the person. Is, so, so, you know, it seems to me that all of these are kind of building on the past ones that you've done. Um, bipedal, though, it's a, it's a much different challenge, isn't it? 
Well, you know, the core thing we're looking at is dynamic balance, active balance. Mm -hmm. Here, I'll give you a demo. I can stand here on two legs, which are pretty small feet, or I can go on one leg, <laughs> or I could even jump and keep my balance. It, it is really a miracle that we can do that. And the whole idea is to figure out what the uh, computations and the sensing yeah. are needed to do that. And th that's the core. And whether it's a four-legged thing or a two-legged thing, uh, it really, that's, that's just the surface do you, uh, of do, it. Do you spend a lot of time around the offices acting out these different things to see how they, how they work? When, when we were looking at self-writing, which is getting up off the, f uh, the floor after you've fallen, we did a lot of it because people do it different ways yeah. and our robots had more or less uh, ability to move. And so uh, uh, we did do it then. Um, you know, for the gates, especially quadruped things, uh, people aren't so good at uh, doing the same things. You, you do we, take let a... Me, let me interrupt. We, a, we did... Lately, we've been working on making Atlas uh, better at handling things with both hands. And we have been looking at how people can use their torso and they can go through wide range of motion. So if you were moving boxes back and forth, you wouldn't go over, pick up the box, yeah. step like this and put it down. You know, you'd use all your motion. So we have been acting out those things. And, tr and getting the robots to do it. So you feel like nature and biology are the, the, the best models for creating a robot? Um, you know, it's a, it's a two-way thing. Uh, nature has accomplished it. So we definitely look for guidance and inspiration from nature wherever we can get it. But it's also true that we don't have the same engineering tools available to us uh, that nature does. And so we have to do the best we can with the levels of complexity we can handle, mm -hmm. the power sources we have, because we don't have the, you know, at the molecular level, uh, what biology does. But we definitely get a tremendous amount of inspiration, dynamics, compliance, balance, at that level. Uh, in the next clip, I'll show you an example of another thing we do that's a, sort of a copy of biology. So you've been moving in an interesting direction with the, the last couple of units. Um, big, big, how much did Big Dog weigh? Uh, big Dog weighed about 225 okay. pounds, but the bigger yeah. one weighed about, uh, when it was fully loaded, it was 1,250 pounds. So, so the, the, the last couple of generations of robots over the last few years have been getting smaller and smaller. Um, and I suspect that presents a challenge in and of itself. It's both a challenge but a real opportunity. The motivation was to get to a size where strength to weight ratios uh, are good. Uh, but also, we wanted to make the robots friendlier. Uh, you know, our 1,250-pound robot, no one wants to get near that. Yeah. You know, you can get crushed easily, you can get pinched. Um, the latest robot, the Spot Mini, is only 60 pounds, which includes a manipulator, and it's, it's much friendlier. And when, you know, when we demo it, people come right up to it, they want to pet it. Uh, they're not intimidated the way they are uh, by the bigger ones. So that was one of the motivations. So were you getting a little bit tired of all of that coverage around, you know, people talking about just how, how terrifying all the robots were? Uh, you know, here, I'll give you a statistic. If you look at our YouTube likes and dislikes, uh, over the whole course of us showing videos, it's um, something like 20 to 1 likes to dislikes. And in the last few years, it's something like 50 to 1 <laughs> likes to dislikes. But the media is relentlessly yeah. talking about how <laughs> terrifying the robots are. So, there's a little bit of a disconnect in my mind with that. All right, so we're going to take a little turn, turn right now. Let's, let's show the newer robot. So this is the Spot Mini. Uh, this, is, this debuted a month or two ago, right? This is, this is pretty much brand uh, new. A few months, I yeah. think. It, we finished putting it together in February and, and maybe put a video out a couple of months later. It's much smaller than Spot. So the Spot is the larger one above it. The large one weighs about 180 pounds, yeah. and this one weighs about 60. We designed it so that it would be a size that could fit in your house. This isn't a real house. This is a test house that we built. And those aren't real people. Those are our engineers. Uh, <laughs> those are really advanced robots? <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, we have stairways. This is a cool demo where we're, it's using its vision to get up the stairs and its balance. And you know, we can push and pull on it, and yep. it uh, succeeds in keeping it. Here, we're, it's planning stepping stones using its vision to see where it can uh, walk and where it can't walk. So it's pretty smart about that. And we took it out into the real world, or at least the realer world. And it's using its uh, balance and its uh, sensing in order to deal with this 
very unstructured environment. I, I have to ask you, so, you, you know, obviously there's a big contrast between this video, also the debut Spot Mini video. <laughs> there's Let a me chicken. interrupt you. This is, <laughs> this is a demo of, of a Fair biological enough. thing. That's a real chicken who's keeping its head stabilized so yeah. it can see better. And uh, we've started uh, to do that. We even put googly eyes on the robot <laughs> for this one. But, uh, but we're you know, doing all the calculations so that we can serve wine with the robot, obviously an important application. No, so that we can do manipulation better even while the robot's moving. And uh, this is you know, the beginning of a, of a sketch of what someday we could do with these robots. They're not quite uh, able to really go into a kitchen and clean up yet. Uh, and you can see they can't, they can't really deliver the beer. I, w <laughs> I was going to ask you if, you're, if you were like making household robots, but I, I am looking at the, begin at the end of that, and it looks like they're, they're not quite ready for prime time. Yeah, well, we're, we're looking at it. So it is so something, consumer coming. space is something you're interested? Uh, you know, we're looking at everything. Yeah. We, you know, there's a big wide range of, uh, of potential applications. But uh, we're just going to sit here and pretend like we can't okay. hear that deep okay. rumbling sound. Yeah, it sounds like a monster yeah. is attacking. Oh, look. Oh. This is, uh, you brought a friend of yours along. Uh, we brought one of the spots with us. This is the 180-pound um, the version. And we brought the Seth, who's uh, operating it. Uh, so this robot is powered by batteries, uh, uh, but it's got a hydraulic actuation system. So this is the original spot. This is the original spot, about two years old. Um, it's got uh, onboard computers that are co coordinating the legs. So Seth is just giving it speed and direction, and the robot's figuring out how to use its legs in order to accommodate uh, whatever he's telling it. So here it's using a walking gait, which is one leg at a time. And when he goes a little faster, it's going to switch into trotting or pacing. Let's see, it's still walking. There it's, uh, there it's uh, trotting. Now, one of the things we're interested in is using the mobility of the body to contribute to an arm. And so this robot is able to pose itself. And when you have an arm on there, you can get some extra reach by using the posturing of the body. So I'll just demo. If I'm, if I'm sitting here using my arm, I only can reach this far. But if I lean over and twist, my hand can reach a much wider range of spaces. And that's what we do when we have an arm on spot. Jordan really wants to know if she could come out and knock it over. Uh, not today. <laughs> the other thing is this robot's omnidirectional. So Seth can make it go forward and backward, go sideways, and it can also turn in place. And it can also do a few tricks. I, I hope it works on the stage. Stage is a little bouncy, but we'll give it a try. This is uh, a skipping gate. Yeah. What's next? That's just two legs at a time. This is like watching dressage. This is like dressage, yeah. And of course, just plain old running, so you can go out for a, a jog with your uh, robot. Right. Thanks, Seth. Thanks, Spot. So, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> when you set out and work on a new robot, are, are you considering particular applications for it? Um, you know, we have a number of applications sort of vaguely in mind, but we're really capabilities guys. And capabilities means mobility, dexterity. If you have an arm, you'd be able to, ability to mm -hmm. handle objects deftly and, and move them around as you like, and perception. You know, it's amazing. I can look out at the room and there's, I don't know, three or 400 people here, and my visual system sees every place there's one of you, and I can move around and, and you don't start moving. Uh, so my ability to perceive the world around me is very strong. The robots aren't up to that yet, but they're getting there. And uh, 
so those things, uh, mobility, dexterity, and perception, are the key ingredients. And when they are mature, I think robots will be incredibly useful and do a very wide range of things. The applications we've thought of so far, but the applications that people like these startup guys will figure out uh, in the coming years. Early on, a uh, number of the robots were funded by places like uh, the Defense Department, the military. So obviously, you were creating these, you know, specifically for the battlefields. Um, I'm wondering if that's shifted at all. You know, n now that uh, obviously you're under the the Google umbrella as of as of two years ago, um, has the goal for these robots changed? You know, the truth is that the the work we did for the government wasn't. Some of it was for the battlefield, but it was really to bring the technology to an advanced state where it could be applied to a lot of things. Just the way DARPA has funded internet and computers and lasers and all kinds of things, uh, I think robotics is the same way. Uh, it is true that we have wound down the government work over the course of about a year and a half or so uh, since we were acquired by Google. And uh, we, we're more open to uh, just the broad range of possible applications uh, uh, that capability provides. Why was Google a good fit? Well, you know, the thing I said when we were acquired is DARPA, who was our main sponsor before, had a big ambition and a lot of resources. And Google had even more ambition <laughs> and more resources. And, uh, you know, that's one reason. Yeah. Um, but I think the opportunity of combining the digital age with the Iron Age, uh, and robots still require a lot of Iron Age things, power, actuators, hydraulics, uh, carefully designed mechanical systems, combining that with sensing and algorithms and big data, uh, I think that's the way uh, robots will succeed. So, so do you find that uh, working in that corporate structure that you have more freedom than you had working with uh, the government? Um, yeah. I mean, before we were, when we were uh, pre-acquisition, we were a contract-driven company. So we never had investors, like almost everybody here has investors. We were bootstrapped and we uh, funded ourselves by selling projects. And we were pretty good at aligning the projects with our own goals. Uh, but ultimately, you know, you have to steer uh, sometimes a tortuous course. And uh, uh, now we're a little more free to uh, figure out what the, uh, you know, the best way to make progress is. So you feel like it's been a good fit for you? Uh, yeah, it's been a good fit. Uh, I do think that customers are a good thing too, though, because they pull you uh, in useful directions and make you worry about stuff that you, yeah. you, know, you might put off. So I have to ask, there have been some rumors that surfaced uh, a little while ago. It's been two years since you were acquired by the company. Bloomberg reported that Google is looking to sell. Can you comment on that? Well, I've heard the rumor. That's about all I can say. <laughs> okay, so you, so you do feel comfortable. You do, it, it, it has been a good setting for you. You've been able to work our, well within the Google. Our department. progress over the last uh, two and a half years has just been uh, remarkable, I think. Uh, you know, we, we have always, as a company, made good progress, but it's been, uh, it's been just uh, terrific over the last couple of years as part of Google. Do you have any robots in your home? Um, I had a Roomba. I have a lot of gadgets. Yeah. Uh, not, not really any robots, now. Okay. What, not quite ready yet. What's it, what's it gonna take? These have visited yeah. my house many okay. times. You know, we have a program of sending the robots to uh, several of our employees' houses to get testing on diversity of terrains. Uh, we have a repair budget associated with those visits because the robots do punch holes in the plaster and things like that. Yeah. Uh, all right, what's what, it going to take? One final question. What is it going to take for the founder of Boston Dynamics <laughs> to put a robot in your home? Uh, I'd love to have a spot mini if they'd let me have one. OK. But, uh, as, long as, as long as they'll let you have your own giant robot, that's right. you'll be happy. Yeah. All right, thank you so much for joining us, Mark. OK, good. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Good talk to you. Can you go off? Yeah.